I promise I'm gonna get consistent with my background soon. Bugs. Weird, creepy little things that make your skin itch. Bring their friends along when you spill orange juice. And also lay eggs in your nostrils while you sleep. Kidding with that last one, but good luck getting that image out of your head when you're next in bed. Or was I joking? Oh, and they could also get to the size of surfboards. Not kidding with that one. So good news for anyone with a fear of creepy crawlies. The worst is now behind us. Since today's bird eating spider standing in the Carboniferous would have reminded me of that meme where I'm sure they're just gathered round to listen to a nice story that the lady is about to tell. And the biggest of these arthropods was Arthropleura amata, the giant relative of today's millipede. So make sure you stick around for the whole video because we're going to be finding out everything we can about this giant animal and how these arthropods got so big. Now similar to what I said in the Dunkleosteus video, several species exist within the genus of Arthropleura. So for the sake of conciseness, I'll be talking mainly about the type of species Arthropleura amata, which thankfully for entertainment's sake, also happens to be the largest species. Arthropleura was first discovered and described by Hermans Jordan and von Meyer all the way back in 1854. And the genus has since been found all over North America and Europe having first occurred around 345 million years ago during the Visian stage of the early Carboniferous. And it managed to keep crawling around for around 55 million years, right to the early Permian. Now let's take a look at the actual description of this beast. And remember that you're not watching Bugs Life after taking shrooms. This time. Arthropleura amata was, as already stated, a type of millipede belonging to the group known as Diploda. Arthropleura is characterised by having three lobes on the top part of its dorsal armour, similar to that of a trilobite. Because apparently being absolutely bloody huge isn't distinctive enough. The head is actually pretty much unknown. Initially scientists thought they had found the head of this millipede, but it turned out to be just another section of armour making its length estimates even longer. Though phylogenetic bracketing has helped us estimate that Arthropleura's head likely looks similar to Microdecemplex, being quite small relative to the body size with non-filamentous antennae. So I hear you say that must be a lot of legs for a millipede considering how big it was. Well, despite the name, millipedes don't necessarily have 1,000 legs in the same way that centipedes don't necessarily have a hundred legs. What makes the difference here between the two groups of myriapods is that centipedes are usually carnivorous and venomous, with one pair of legs per segment, whilst millipedes are herbivorous, or detrital feeders, with two sets of legs per segment, or tergite. Now the size of Arthropleura varies a hell of a lot from species to species. But the largest specimen, though not quite complete, has given estimates of up to 2.63 metres or 8 foot 8 inches. Good luck feeling your way to the toilet in the middle of the night with that image in your head. As for the environment that it lived in, despite the wide geographical range in which Arthropleura is found in, most chunks of the land during the Carboniferous were more or less the same, being covered almost solely in forests and swampy areas which you can find out more about in my Carboniferous video here. Now because of the abundance in floral food, as well as the smaller size of the more simplistic terrestrial predators at the time that didn't know pack hunting was a thing yet, Arthropleura was one of the very few animals in Earth's history that actually had a fairly peaceful life. Being herbivorous meant that it wasn't picking fights with the other kids, and no one else dared mess with this thing because of the size. I mean, look at it. Would you mess with this thing? So its size helped massively, but how the hell did it get this big in the first place? Well, to answer that question, we need to take a look at how it breathes. So I've touched on this before, 
But the respiratory system of arthropods differs massively to that of tetrapods, namely in the fact that they don't actually have lungs or even breathe through their face holes. Instead they have an air duct system going throughout their bodies, delivering oxygen through tiny holes dotted all over. Now this not only means that they don't need blood, but also means that Arthropleura is truly the limit in terms of arthropod size. Oxygen not being carried by blood can only get so far through that dermal armour, so anything bigger means that that oxygen will have too much to travel through. In fact, the whole reason that bugs are no longer as big as they used to be is solely down to the oxygen content of today. During the Carboniferous, the atmospheric oxygen concentration was around a third higher than it is today, so these air ducts didn't need to work quite so hard. Since the oxygen could travel further, the limit was higher, and the growing energy that went into the air ducts could now go into growing the rest of the body, hence the size of other creepy crawlies during the age of the insects. Now adding the fact that food was incredibly abundant for a herbivore at this time, with little competition, and the fact that no other animal was predating on it, it becomes quite clear how Arthropleura got so big. So if life was so great for Arthropleura, where did it go? Well, considering the oxygen levels later on, it wouldn't have survived without getting a lot smaller. Now it was originally thought that Arthropleura went extinct as a result of the Carboniferous rainforest collapse, since its food withered and died but this millipede actually survived this event. The leading theory now is that those bloody tetrapods came along and spoiled everything. With new competition and potential predation from the rapidly growing and newly formed reptiles, Arthropleura simply couldn't keep up to see much of the Permian. Are you sad to see it gone? Let me know down below in the comments and if you did enjoy this video and felt you learned something new, please consider supporting this channel by subscribing and checking out the Patreon link below to see what kind of cool benefits you can get from that. And I'll catch you guys next time.